Hi there, I'm Andrew Brown. Welcome to Real Time Music and Sound with Pure Data. In this episode, we're going to be looking at making a mono synth. So as a demonstration um, patch, we'll build a simple mono synth, um, abstracting all of the um, elements into their own sub patches. Uh, the elements being sort of the oscillator section, then the filter section, then the amplifier section. So let's get started. Um, we'll start with uh, building the sort of oscillators up um, and we'll just have a simple um, sawtooth wave. We'll start with the phaser object and then convert it into a waveform which covers the entire range from negative one to positive one, so it'll be a bipolar wave. Um, we can give it a frequency. Okay, and for the moment we'll put um, an amplifying stage down here. Limit that from zero to one, and then go out to the DAC. Okay, so some frequency and a little bit of amplitude, and there we have um, our beginning. So that's um, our phaser, our oscillator. Um, in order for it to be a little bit um, more interesting, I'm going to make it a two oscillator mono synth. Um, and what we'll do is some detuning between the two oscillators. So I'll multiply the second oscillator by a little bit so that it's slightly different frequency um, and then those two will get added together so there's our frequency all right so that um, gives us a more interesting um, sawtooth wave Okay, so this um, effectively uh, our uh, oscillator section. So now let's talk about putting that into a sub patch. In PD, to create a sub patch, you start a new object with the words PD, and then give your sub patch um, a name. In this case, I'm going to call my sub patch oscillators. That will open up um, a new uh, PD window. So we now have two PD windows, I'll leave it over to the left. Um, and then we can grab everything that we want um, out of this. And in that case, it's all of that. We can copy it and paste it um, into our sub patch. Now we need to be able to get in and out of our sub patch. And so there's an inlet object. Um, there is also an inlet tilde object if it's an audio stream but in this case we're just getting numbers in so we'll have that um, but the output from our oscillators um, is uh, an audio signal so we use the outlet tilde object so we have an inlet and an outlet you'll notice that um, on the oscillator sub patch that the inlets and the outlets appear so we can keep that there. So we, in a sense, no longer require any of that because it's in the sub patch. We can pass the value for a frequency in here. The output of our sub patch can go there, turn the volume up, um, and we get the um, effect happening here. All right, and we can close this sub patch. So we have exactly the same functionality, um, but we are using a sub patch for that. Okay, so we have our sub patch for our oscillators. Um, let's make it a bit more interesting than just turning the volume, the frequency up and down. Let's use um, a note in so that we can make our frequency happen as a result of MIDI pitches. 
So if you remember the note in has pitch, velocity and channel. So in this case we want to use the pitch and we want to convert it into a frequency. We use the MIDI to frequency object that goes in there. Um, then when I play, oops, we need to turn the volume up to hear that. So I can now control that from my MIDI controller. It's a bit more interesting. Okay, so we have an oscillator section. Let me move that up. Uh, the next section we're going to look at is filters. So we will use the Bob um, Bob Bab, Bob filter, um, and it will take um, a couple of different arguments. So the audio will go in there and back out, um, but it needs to have um, a filter cutoff. It's a low pass filter, resonant low pass filter. The filter cutoff. So let's um, give it a um, value of say 300. And I'll also give it um, a Q for the resonance, make it 1.5. So you might be wondering why um, I'm using message boxes for these things because they are fixed numbers. Um, let's just make that work. There we have it. Okay, so a filtered sound. The reason I'm using the message boxes is because um, I want to be able to set those parameters as startup parameters. And so I'm going to use the load bang object. This um, object, when the patch is open, sends a bang. That bang will then um, trigger both of these numbers to be passed in as arguments um, to that filter. All right, so um, that's all good and well. Um, so let's copy that into a new sub patch. So we create a new sub patch. Remember they start with PD. We'll call this sub patch filters. And we can paste into there. Again, we need to add an inlet tilde for our audio to come in. And we need to add an outlet tilde for our audio to go out. Okay, so there's inlets and outlets are there. So we no longer need that. We should be able to pass the audio through our filter stage and everything should sound similar. Which indeed it does. Okay, so far so good. Um, the next stage is um, our amplifying stage. Um, where we're going to do our amplitude envelopes and so forth. So um, let's build that. We are going to have a dedicated amplifier. We'll make that prior to any of this sort of master gain um, output here for the minute. Um, and what I want this to be is um, an envelope. So I'm going to use the V line to control the amplitude and I'm going to pass the V line a message. Um, so to get us started let's say one five and we go from zero and we fade down over let's say 700 milliseconds delay that second line by five milliseconds to let the attack happen. Okay so if I connect all of this up Then to the volume up down here. Okay, so we click on our envelope and we've, we've got that. So that's all good and well. Um, it would probably make sense for us to have the um, envelope triggered by our note in. So let's do a little bit of elaborating on that. Um, one way we don't we want to. Um, make sure that it's only triggered by note ons and not note offs. In order to make sure that uh, we only get note ons to trigger, um, we're going to use a strip note object, which strips out any note offs, takes the pitch and the velocity. So we can 
reconnect the pitch um, out here um, and the velocity will come out this line um, we can use that for the minute to trigger our envelope <laughs> Okay, so that's all pretty good, but we might as well, given that we've got velocity, um, make this um, a velocity sensitive um, envelope. So we will change this instead of always going to the highest value, we'll go instead to a variable um, which is passed in here. Uh, so a strip note, if we look at the velocity values that are coming out of there from the keyboard, we can see that they're between 0 and 127. So we need to divide that by 127 in order to make that. Okay, so we've now got a velocity sensitive synth. I might even turn the volume up. Okay, so that's all good and well. Um, the final thing though is that we probably don't just want to trigger a percussive envelope, we, we want to have some sustain um, on there as well. Um, so we will make um, this envelope go down to a sustain um, level. Um, pass it a second argument for that. We'll make the sustain um, drop reasonably fast, say 200 milliseconds. So we need to be able to pass in a value for this second um, variable for the sustain level. Um, we'll make that value 50% um, of the velocity. Uh, so we have the velocity coming in here, we've got 50% of the velocity there. We need to use a pack object so that those two can be combined and passed into this argument here. And this will now sustain. You can uh, see on the oscilloscope that we're getting a drop, an initial attack, and then a drop down to a sustained level. Okay, but we need to add our release. So in the, um, the velocity area, we can check to see, we know that the um, velocities are going to be zero um, for node offs. We can demonstrate that just by way of instruction. So it's on and off, so we're getting zero. So we can select um, that zero um, in order to trigger um, that velocity off. Once we get that, we then want to make sure it does um, a ramp that goes down to zero. Um, it might take, let's say, 700 milliseconds. Um, so when that happens, we want to bang that and send it to the V-line. So now if we turn the volume back up. Okay, so we're getting our attack decay, sustain, and our release. All right, that was a little bit complicated, but that's all of our envelopes. So we need to put that now into a sub patch. So we create sub patch, um, call it amplifiers. And it's um, appearing over here. All right, so there's a little bit to select. We want all of that. We need the pack object, we need this. Um, I guess we'll take that script note. Uh, we'll take that select. Um, actually, I might leave the select. Oh no, I'll take the select. Okay, so we've got all of this in here. We can make it look a little bit more tidy. Um, we have an inlet for our uh, on velocity and we'll have an inlet for our off message. Um, we'll also need to have an inlet for the audio and 
we'll need to have an outlet for the audio as well so we've got this uh, object here it's got three inlets um, and one outlet so the inlets first of all we pass the audio to it um, the second inlet is this um, velocity value coming from there and the third inlet is the other velocity value so we can check for our off and our outlet is there and let's just check that works okay so that's all working so now we can get rid of all of that we're currently uh, no longer using okay so we pretty much have our little monosynth I want to um, add some a couple of uh, controls to it. In particular, we want to be able to control the filter cutoff and possibly the release time, uh, for example, in the amplification stage. Um, we will do that uh, with controllers. So, um, oops, control in. CTL in, control in. So that's going to get values from my MIDI controller at uh, on the dial, which is controller 80. And I'll get a second one, which will be set to controller number 81, which is my second controller. So those two will um, use to control the filter cutoff and the release. Um, we need to be able to get inside these values need to get inside these sub patches we could create um, another inlet like we did over here for the amplifier but i'd like to show um, another um, project another way of doing that we can use send and receive objects so if this is the cutoff we can send um, this as a message called cutoff and then that can be received inside here uh, so let me if we do want to demonstrate that we can demonstrate it here we can receive cutoff and you will see that the values which are sent uh, to there okay let me change this name because I think I've used that um, before in another patch that's better so I use a unique name so these numbers are then appearing out here when we send with a name and then receive with that name what we need of course is for that receive to be inside there but let me talk a little bit um, more generally about send and receive this diagram um, shows the send and the receive um, objects that are available in PD. So this is what we're using over here on the left hand side. We're using send and then um, a name and then receiving with that name. Um, the send and receives um, are used for data so we can send numbers over them um, and they work such that we can have um, any number of sends going to any number of receives and we can have many send objects and many receive objects so it's a many to many situation we can also have send and receive tilde objects for sending and receiving audio um, this means however that we have to limit ourselves to this um, architecture here a one to many architecture so for send tilde objects for audio we have one send going to several locations because there are situations in audio that you want the, the inverse of that there is a different set of um, objects called throw and catch um, and so they these ones throw and catch you can have several throws for audio that will be caught um, by one uh, catch statement 
So in this case, you could send um, uh, data, say, from several audio sources to a um, to one um, delay unit or something like that. So let's get back to our patch. So we have our oscillator sub patch, a filter sub patch, and our amplifier sub patch. So we've got this cutoff, which um, needs to go into our filters sub patch. So here is our filters sub patch. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to move that, cut it from there, paste it in here. Um, so it's going to receive this cutoff value, and I'm going to pass uh, that cutoff value to the filter. So now when we play, okay, we get the filter cut off. However, the values from MIDI are not all that useful. So let's do some scaling for that. Um, what we'll do is say, um, multiply them. Actually, what I'll do first is divide them by 127. That's going to give us a range between 0 and 1, which might seem a bit odd, but let me show you why I'm going to do that. What I'm going to do is to use the power function to scale uh, the values in a non-linear way because the um, harmonic overtone series frequencies are not linear, as we've heard before. So that's going to give us a better result. That's still between 0 and 1, so let's multiply that by, let's say, 10,000, which will give us a range from 0 to 10,000. However, 10, 0 hertz is not great because it's going to cut our volume out. So we just do a small offset, let's say plus 20, so that the lowest value we get will be 20 hertz, then the highest value will be 10,020. And then we can pass that to our filter cutoff. Let's have a listen. Alright, that's much better. So now we've got control over our cutoff. And what we've done then, just to remind you, is that we've sent this value here and it's being uh, received inside the filter sub patch. So as you can see, we were able to send material to stuff that's inside sub patches. So we need to do a similar process for our um, amplifier. So we will send um, our, what will we call this? Oh, it's our release rate, that's right. Um, so I'll call it release rate as a value. And then we'll open up our amplifier sub patch and we will receive our release rate message Make that a little bigger um, and if we put a number box in here we'll be able to see that that is arriving okay when i move my dial uh, it's not that's because i made a typo release rate Okay, so we're sending release rate from our main patch and it's being received in our sub patch. So we need to scale um, this value into a reasonable range. Um, so I think up to about sort of a two second delay or so, uh, release time would be appropriate. And that's, you know, close enough to 20, it's a little bit more. Now we need to be able to get that, oops, we need to be able to get that number into our variable. Let's just see where it goes. Yeah, that's fine. Um, so we should be able to pass that into there. But if we do this um, immediately, what will happen is it will trigger it every time it goes in. So what we need to do instead is actually store this number. Um, we can store the number in a float object. So we can pass it to a float object. So we can store our number in our float. And we need to um, trigger that number to come out by banging it every time we get a note off message. Uh, that should do it. And then we can shorten that. Okay, that's good. 
Um, and we want to make sure that um, we start with a decent um, amount. Float will default to zero as a, as a value, but that's a bit short for our release. So let's put in um, a default. Use a message box to send the message 700 to that float whenever the program starts by using a load bang. So that will just put in a default value of 700. Okay. So we have our filter. Now, the final thing to do for this is to talk about how we can make our little monosynth here um, a sub patch in a sense which can be brought up later on and actually stored um, as its own file. That's in PD called creating an abstraction. So what we're going to do is to open up a new patch and I'm going to uh, copy all of this main part of our process, the oscillators, the filters um, and the amplifiers into um, a new patch and I'm going to make sure I've got the appropriate inlets that we need. I'll make this bigger like our other patches so you can see what's going on. So there's um, one inlet say for the note we need a second inlet for the um, velocity which is coming in here we need a third inlet for the off velocity which is coming in there so we maybe we should name these so I remember what they are so this is the MIDI pitch let's just call it pitch This one is the on velocity. This one is the off velocity. And we also, um, well, these other things can stay outside because they're sending, so that will be fine. So that pitch can connect in here. The um, on velocity goes in here. Here, and the off velocity goes in here and then we need to make sure it's got an outlet an audio outlet so this is um, our uh, whole sort of mono synth without any of our controls we can save this patch if we save this patch as say so monosynth.pd um, oh yes that's fine, save it in there so I'm saving in my pd directory then if we open up um, another new patch Then we create an object. Now at the moment this is not going to work, and I'm just going to show you why it's not going to work. We could, what we should be able to do is to, oh, it did work, and that's because it faded into the default PD thing. I didn't quite expect that, but that's excellent. So you can see that because I saved it into the default um, area for PD, then it shows up. Typically, uh, you make, have to make sure that these patches are in the same folder. So I'm going just to make sure that's fine that's going to call this my mono test patch and you can see it's saving into the same directory where my mono synth is so that's great so this whole um, patch is now what called saved onto the hard drive um, and it can come up as what's called an abstraction then what we can do is we want all of this oops we want all of this um, control 
information. Copy that across to here, just for ease. So that pitch goes in there, the um, on velocities go in there, and the off velocity can go in there. Okay, so we just need to connect um, our monosynth um, in the abstraction to an output. So I'm going to copy that over to here so I can reuse that code. Turn the volume up on abstraction. To demonstrate that this one's working and this one will work as well, I'll get rid of the original patch. So now we should be working on here. Indeed it is. And we've got control over our cutoff. And Our release rate. Okay, excellent. Uh, this patch is open, but it need not be. Um, nor does that one need to be open. So, what we've done is we've created a monosynth um, abstraction. Um, and it will appear here because it's in the same folder and we're sending information to it and you will see that this data which is using send is being received by the abstraction inside um, this. We can click on there and open that up and then we can click on this oscillator sub patch and open that up. Um, so we've got several layers of things and you can see that it means that um, our actual um, performable patch is um, much less cluttered because of all of this use of sub patches and abstractions. Okay, it's been quite a tour um, of activities. Um, so thanks for persevering with that. Give uh, sub patches a go in your own work um, and I will catch you in the next video.